let's learn about this successful, if not a little shady, pharmaceutical company around the turn of the century on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Our story is about a druggist company run by three Gilbert brothers. We have John J. Gilbert, the oldest of the three. He was born in 1845 and he's the president of the company. Then we have Martin Lane Gilbert, which I think he might have been born around 1854, but there's a lot of Martin Gilberts and I'm having a hard time narrowing it down. I think Martin either died young or left the company early on because other than this record here, he's never mentioned again. Here's an 1880 census with John and William living together, no Martin. And this 1895 directory only lists the two brothers. The youngest is William E. Gilbert. He was born in 1855, and he's the secretary and treasurer of the company. As far as I can tell, they were all born on a farm in West Virginia. They worked as farmhands in their early years. Now, I don't know the story of how they ended up in Baltimore, but at least two of the brothers became chemists and formed the Gilbert Brothers and Company in Baltimore around 1870. Most of the company's records were destroyed in a fire, so we just have to piece together what we can. I found a listing of their products, which included headache medicine, toothpaste, cream for the skin, conditioning powder to be added to horse, cattle, or poultry feed, flavoring extracts, and a tonic for nervousness. That's quite a variety. Here's a later list, including honey tolu, a cough remedy, Jaeger's sarsaparilla, Jaeger's liniment, laxitol, and several other products. I think these are typical drugstore slash pharmacy items for the time. Remember, pharmacies were more like a general store. They had a variety of regularly needed household items available to buy. Like many drugstore owners at the time, they concocted some of the items themselves. If they saw a need, they worked out a way to fill the need. One of their more popular items was the Jaeger's liniment. That's what my bottle is, I believe. I found a few examples on the internet with a variety of bottles, big ones, small ones, stoneware jugs, and flasks like mine. They had many, many products. I purchased this bottle because of its unusual color. It was described as cornflower yellow, but I think the proper name is actually called Citron. You don't usually see yellow bottles this old. I found it very odd and very cool, and that's why I had to have it. I was having a hard time capturing the color on film since it's so subtle. I had to put a white piece of paper behind it, but you can see the bottom actually shows it quite nicely. This yellow is a variant of green, and from what I found, chromium oxide will produce yellowish green under oxidizing conditions and an emerald green under reducing conditions in the glass. I don't really know what that means, but the important thing is that it's the chromium oxide is what makes it that color. It's a blown bottle, tooled top. I love the huge bubbles in it, and it's very irregular on the bottom. It's got whittled spots in different areas, and it's an interesting cork top. I would date this around the late 1880s into the 1890s. So I believe this had Jaeger liniment in it. I'm just comparing it to this bottle that I found with a label. Anyways, liniment was a pain reliever. You'd use it externally on painful muscles like you would use Bengay or Icy Hot. You could also use it on your horses. It would advertise for man or beast. Here's another one of their popular products, Jaeger's Sarsaparilla, and I found this interesting ad for it. This is from 1902, and it says, In the old-fashioned leeching days, they used to draw poison from the blood by drawing blood from the body. Today, the blood is cleansed in the body. The leech has gone out of use. Jaeger's Sarsaparilla, with celery, takes its place and works better. It says, you can tell when the blood is poisoned. There are blotches on the face, scales of scrofula on the scalp, the stomach is deranged, food fails to satisfy, and it goes on and on. 
It says, this is unmistakable evidence that your blood needs Jaeger sarsaparilla. It says, it's a sheer cure because every day we receive testimonies to its efficacy. Then in 1903, there were a series of five court cases of complaints of people claiming they went blind after drinking bottles of their tonic called Jamaican ginger. One guy was looking for $30,000 in damages. A former employee testified that the formula for Gilbert's Jamaica Ginger contained 30% wood alcohol as well as 50% grain alcohol and 20% water. Apparently wood alcohol in pure form called Colombian spirits is far more poisonous than grain alcohol and is never intended for human consumption and that's what most likely caused the blindness. Wood alcohol is now called methanol, and Wikipedia says that as little as 10 milliliters can cause permanent blindness by destruction of the optic nerve, and 30 milliliters is potentially fatal. So medical experts employed by the Gilberts argued, saying that the Colombian spirits are no more poisonous than grain alcohol. A few of these Gilbert employees said that they used it every day with no harm. To cinch the defense's argument, William E. Gilbert takes the stand himself. He testifies that both he and his family tried the formula before it was sold to the public and also that the concoction is intended to be a medicine, not a beverage. But someone pointed out on the label that it says, quote, a delightful beverage in the hot summer months, but I can't find a picture of it. While William is still on the stand, he makes a dramatic gesture to confirm their Jamaica ginger is not poisonous. With jurors and spectators watching, William drinks an ounce of this concoction, and then he does it again an hour and a half later. It was reported that while the Jamaica ginger was, quote, freely diluted with water, <laughs> no ill effects were experienced. So this confused the jury, and after 14 days, they remained inconclusive. The judge discharged it without reaching a verdict. Shortly afterwards, it was reported that all five cases were settled privately out of court, and the amounts were not reported. John J. Gilbert died in 1923, and he left his family a considerable fortune. 25,000 of it went to his brother William. Now, William Gilbert, he served as mayor of Laurel, Maryland for four years, from 1906 through 1910. He also served a partial term in 1920, and it looks like someone had to complete his term for him. William died in 1935 at age 80. It seems the company kind of disappears after 1930 or so. I'm not sure if the company was sold or if this company just uses the name, but there is a Jaeger's liniment being sold today from Oakhurst Company. The last address that I have for Gilbert Brothers and Company in 1930 was 310 West Lombard Street in Baltimore, Maryland, which is this building here. And that's it for today. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.